My life as an artist started uh, as a child growing up in the tea gardens of uh, uh, West Bengal, North Bengal in India, which is at the foot of uh, foothills of Himalayas. Uh, grew up uh, in a lush green uh, environment. You could see a sea of tea garden, you know, plants all uh, and our house and then you could not see the second house. It was so isolated. My parents, they come from uh, a small village in uh, uh, North India, where uh, it's a out and out patriarchal society. And the women, are, you know, they had to know your place, they were oppressed and they used to cover their heads. And uh, well, the power was with, was with all the men. Now, what my father did was he took a job outside of UP. He came to Bengal and against his family's wishes, he brought my mom also along. My mom was not supposed to be there. And my mom saw a new way of you know, life and bringing up children, which was much freer, I guess. And we are five sisters, so my mother had to keep us occupied. And she would ply us with all sorts of art materials, paints, craft, stitching, embroidery, just to keep us busy during the holidays, especially. In spite of that, we grew up like wild children in that tea garden and we kept each other company. And that's where uh, I think the first spark of creativity was born. Uh, those days, it was not considered, you know, good to have too many daughters because a lot of, um, they had to get them married and a lot of uh, money, I guess, was involved or whatever. So my mother decided to bring us up uh, uh, in a better way, in a better environment. And she was very, very adamant we would get that we have to have proper education, and which we did. Uh, she had to fight her extended family because that was had not been done in our community to first educate your girls to this level and then let them marry who they want and let them do what they wanted. That was something which was unheard of those days. And my mom was like, she fought for us. <laughs> my dad was the gentlest soul ever. And the he's the sweetest, sweetest person ever. He couldn't be strict with us. Uh, the, strict, the strictness and discipline was brought about my, by my mother. She's very, very strong. Uh, <laughs> I think it's because of her that we are also the way we are. And, she managed to, in her way, in her time, where things were so hard, managed to get the girls, her girls, out of that environment which was so punishing, I would say, for girls. So, and she fought with us uh, like a tigress at the time. Uh, subsequently, I went on to do my uh, graduation in Calcutta. So, which was, which is, of course, a big metropol metropolis, and it was a complete different scene change for me. Uh, I did my uh, graduation in botany. I worked in Calcutta in an office automation company for four years. Art was forgotten; it was shelved. I met my husband in that company. We married soon after and moved to Delhi, where uh, we started a family. So I have uh, two beautiful boys. <laughs> uh, they, my husband's uh, work was very high pressured. It was something that, and he traveled a lot. So somebody had to stay home and give stability to the family. Uh, we subsequently moved to Singapore, then South Africa, finally decided to come to UK. When I used to work in Calcutta, during my breaks, that one hour break, I used to go to the US consulate, which had a fabulous library and it had a fabulous art section. And that's where I used to eat my lunch and go through the art, uh, you know, books and all, just read, nothing else. I'm just trying to thread, you know, my influences and the fact that it remained with me, that was one. And second, when my children were growing up, in the afternoon, I would sit and watch this Bob Ross's uh, videos. His art was effortless. He used to create these beautiful paintings and I was absolutely mesmerized by him. Bob Ross was, I think, 
another indication that it was within me, you know, to just destined that I would should uh, take art up. Uh, finally, then, you know, I don't know, it was his voice or it was his art. I decided that uh, I'd just go and get some paints, you know, just like that. I got some cheap quality paints and then I just started uh, doodling at home when the children were around, were not, you know, when I was not busy with the kids. So then when my children started moving out of home, I knew that I did not want to face the effects of the empty nest. So then I found that there's a college, uh, Bracknell and Wokingham College, which offers uh, adult improver classes in watercolor. So I thought, I'd let me just start with that. And there I met uh, my tutor, Sue Smith, who is a committee member, who was a committee member of Wokingham uh, Art Society. She introduced me to the world of artists and art, I would say. I met with other people uh, who were like-minded. I also applied for uh, Reading Guild of Artists membership, uh, which was eventually accepted. And this meant now that I was stepping into, you know, all sorts of activities. There was plein air, artists were meeting each other in their houses. I got to see what other people were using, their materials, their style of work. It was quite exhilarating. And then comes, uh, you know, the, the, the part of an artist's life where you feel like you want to put your art out. You just don't want to keep it within you. And before that, of course, you go through all the motions of self-doubt and am I doing this right? Am I putting too much time into this? Should I be doing something else? But a force stronger than you helps you you know, egg on, yeah, you got to do this, you got to do this. So then I thought, well, I have to take part in an exhibition. So I, I, I did that, that was another high point for me. The second was the, you know, when the world, the first work actually sells. It always surprises me that somebody wants to buy your art. It always surprises me, what is it? And it's the most exhilarating feeling. Uh, more than uh, the money itself, it's just the fact that somebody appreciates or sees something or has some memory has been triggered for that uh, person or it's giving joy, that feeling is absolutely indescribable. And of course, COVID struck and then we all went inwards and online. <laughs> I took part in, in international online uh, exhibitions started doing that and that was such a high point for me i mean uh, to be accepted in the long list of uh, an exhibition which is international oh my god it blew my mind there's one in singapore uh, they were the international watercolor society they were looking for artists uh, during the covid time uh, to express their whatever art which depicted the current times so i made a painting of a man standing in front of a temple the temple was closed and he has a mask over his face and he's just praying so at the time prayers was the only thing that people could do so that was uh, another high point for me recently uh, i my one of my paintings got an award uh, for best watercolor in the show uh, it's a local show. Uh, I was so exhilarated, but yes, whilst it is good to be, you know, recognized uh, online, but when your peers and your local uh, your artists that uh, you interact with, when they accept you as, uh, accept your work as something good, it feels uh, really, really good. My uh, you know, subject is, is the woman who always wants to you know, strive to get out of her shell, wants, you know, wants to see the strength in herself. I'll show you a painting which I made specially, which, I, which is very close to my heart. It's about the, the goddess Kali. Uh, she's uh, worshipped uh, in India and mostly in Bengal. She comes out and she fights the evil and 
it's just she becomes so mad with rage that she destroys the world she does not see what is in front she goes blind with rage and only uh, you know uh, her husband lord shiva is the one who's able to appease her since we came from that kind of a background you know like an oppressed kind of women uh, where women were oppressed i think it was always within me to uh, go against that and so i have managed to do that in my own life but i uh, this needs to come out through my art as well so yeah the medium that i'm working with the uh, watercolors it's such a medium that uh, you just cannot control and it's like you know you let it go and sometimes you'll get the result sometimes not so just like watercolors our life is not uh, something that we can control we have to let go and let things happen to us sometimes uh, control is not always great this is not just about the final product but about the journey itself the journey itself is more interesting and fulfilling full of surprises failures and revelations uh, rather than the end end product and that teaches you much more as a person you get to know so much more about yourself it is so fulfilling uh, you know the whole thing so when you you need trying to be uh, conscious and you're trying to put out a good work you've invested this 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 amount of uh, you know in, on a very good paper or in very good material and all that you lose the freedom i don't know is it me or is it just with other uh, every other person i'm telling you expectation is the worst thing for an artist gosh if you can let go of that expectation and this thing of uh, oh i'm wasting this uh, some artist told me that uh, you just paint on ordinary paper you'll do much better and he also told me that look one moment you would be painting a award winning painting the next one would be so bad that you can't even look at it and it has happened to me so yeah you lose that freedom if you are too precious about your things